My name is David Sim. I didn't need to check the slide to see that. Um, I'm an admissions tutor at UCL History. Um, I'm also a lecturer in the history of the United States, specialised in the 19th century uh, US. Um, just before I start talking this afternoon, can I get a quick show of hands? So I assume you're all in this room, you're all considering history. How many of you are decided on history as the degree that you're going to pursue? Okay, so maybe, was that that third? Um, of those of you who are still weighing up your options, uh, what, how many of you are considering history versus English? Okay, history versus law, history versus anthropology. Okay, um, just to get a sense of, of where people are at. Okay, what I'm going to do over the next 20 minutes or so uh, is firstly try to convince you of the virtues of a history degree. Then once I've done that convincingly, I'm going to convince you of the, uh, the virtues of a history degree with us specifically. So what is it that UCL history does uh, that is different from other history departments? What can we offer you? Um, what do we think are our real uh, virtues in the field? Um, finally, uh, I'll talk a little bit about next steps, or what you might want to consider next, um, should you wish to apply to us. Um, if we've time at the end, and I would imagine that we probably will, very happy to take questions. Um, just so you know, I think this is being filmed, so keep your questions polite. Um, okay, what I want to start with then uh, are some of the reasons that you might want to consider a history degree. Um, in particular, why you might want to consider a history degree versus uh, your other options, of which, of course, you have many. So I want to start with the romantic reasons. Start with the heart, finish with the head. Um, I am a historian. I am passionate about my subject. Obviously, obviously, I think you should do a history degree. It's a remarkable subject. Say so it is the subject that you need to fully comprehend the world around you. Uh, history is the one discipline, I think, that forces you to question why the world is as it is. Other disciplines do this to some extent, but it's really at the heart of the enterprise what historians do. What has led the world uh, to be as it is? Um, what historical factors, what historical structures, what individual decisions, what contingencies, what accidents of fate have led us to this place we are in, uh, we are in right now? Relatedly, how might it be different? I mean, the study of history is also, inevitably, the study of missed opportunities, of lost paths, not taken. So what alternatives are there? How might we question uh, what is presented to us as inevitable? That's what a history degree does. It gets you away from thinking about the natural, the inevitable. It gets you to, to think about the man-made, the constructed, the artificial. Um, I think it's a wonderful discipline for that, to say one of the only disciplines that really does that. Relatedly, History depends upon your creativity, upon your imagination. A good historian is a kind of tourist. Travel to different places, to different times. We try to reconstruct the worlds. We try to inhabit the worlds of our historical subjects. Uh, it's a discipline that demands creativity, therefore. It's a discipline that demands imagination. I think that's really exciting. I think that's something that a, a history degree offers you uh, in, t in spades. It's just a, a fantastic... Uh, way to think about the world, creative way to think about the world. And in addition, all historians are thieves. All historians are thieves. Uh, history borrows the best from other people. <coughs> By doing a history degree, you are not giving up on a degree in the law, or anthropology, or sociology, or literature, or cultural studies. Because historians borrow from all of those disciplines. We incorporate them into our working methods. We think with them. We borrow the very best theories that we can find elsewhere. We incorporate them into the questions that we ask about the world. So history is, is a renaissance discipline. It's a, it's a polymath discipline. It pulls in what is great from other subjects. Um, it's synthetic. And I think that that's a, a real strength and a real reason why you should consider a uh, history degree. Of course, there will be other practicalities on your mind. As you're considering higher education, as you're considering which course uh, you want to take it. And there are good, solid, pragmatic reasons to consider history too. Uh, at the base of all of these suggestions is, is the, the idea that employers value 
what we offer. Uh, employers value a degree in history, and in particular a degree uh, in UCL history. Um, some of the skills that we will teach you over three or four years are portable, are obviously transferable. The most obvious of these is, is in the handling of evidence. Historians read and process vast amounts of material. And with that, they pick out what's salient. They pick out what's really important. And then their job is to present that in a persuasive and eloquent way. Now, that is a skill that is valued uh, across <coughs> professions. That is not, uh, that is a really undervalued skill. Very, very valuable. Um, and it's something that employers want. Likewise, we want you to be critical thinkers. We want you to reflect on evidence. We want you to be questioning about trustworthiness. Again, something that will stand you in good stead for whatever uh, profession you go into. And the basic mechanics, the nuts and bolts of those transferable skills uh, are things that we uh, place at the heart of our curriculum. So you will, at the end of your history degree, be a better writer, a more persuasive writer. You will be a better speaker. We will, we will get you to present things. We will critique presentations. Um, and we'll make you a better reader, able to, to just move through larger amounts of material to synthesize, to, as I say, pull out what's really key, what's really important, uh, to read critically, but to read quickly. All things uh, that are valued in a vast number of professions, uh, which you might be considering going into. And a UCL history degree uh, is really valued by employers for those reasons. Uh, it's also valued because we're a pretty stellar history department. Um, the most recent government exercise, we were ranked as the best uh, history department for research environment. Uh, alongside Oxford, uh, Cambridge was somewhere uh, in third place, I think. So a really stellar department. Um, and employers recognize that. So specifically, what do we offer that might be persuasive? I'm giving you the hard sell here. I apologize for that. Um, firstly, we cap our classes. You will have no classes of 25 uh, as you might get elsewhere in London. Uh, seminars are capped at 12 people. They're often a lot less than that. Uh, we try to make sure, uh, and we do make sure, that our teaching is personalized. What does that mean? It means that we get to know your research interests. We get to know the kind of historian that you are, the way that you think about sources, the way that you think about the world. Uh, and we encourage you to pursue your intellectual interests. Uh, we think that's really, really important. It's a very open department, a very democratic department. Um, so that's beneficial in terms of getting to know the people teaching you. It's also beneficial in that the historians in the department will involve you in their research. So our teaching is driven by the research that we do. Um, if I start a new project today, next year it will be on the books as a course. The research feeds directly into the module directly into the teaching. We have a very flexible curriculum, uh, which is not the case at other institutions. It means that we can do that. Um, it means the teaching is always fresh. It means that you're always at the cutting edge of whatever research trends are. The final thing I want to emphasize is location, as you may have noticed already today. Uh, I would bet, and I am a betting man, I would bet that there is no greater concentration of museums, libraries, research institutes, educational institutions in the world than there is uh, a mile radius from here. There's just a phenomenal concentration of uh, intellectual life in Bloomsbury, uh, unrivaled elsewhere in the world. Why is that important? Well, it's important because we use sources from those institutions in our teaching. In the very first week that you're here, uh, you can take in a course called Making History, which draws on archival sources in the neighborhood. Just an incredible wealth of material uh, for you to utilize throughout your three or four years with us. Uh, really remarkable. And with that, of course, go job opportunities. So uh, in museums, in libraries, with NGOs, with charities, there's just a concentration of people here that offer you uh, fantastic opportunities that very few other institutions uh, can compete with. I told you it was a hard sell. All right, so assuming, assuming that you're persuaded uh, that history is for you and assuming that you consider UCL as a potential destination, what would your first year as an undergraduate look like? Well, 
A couple of years ago, we overhauled our undergraduate curriculum. And one of the things we wanted to emphasize in the first year was managing the transition from A-level to undergraduate study. That's a big jump. Um, we support you with that. And we do that really in, in two specific ways, two new courses. The first is making history, which very first day encourages you to think of yourself as a, an active researcher, as a historian. And you'll be supported in that. We'll teach you research skills. We'll guide you through using an archive. We will encourage you uh, to think about new and creative ways of presenting historical evidence. The second course we offer is writing history. And that's a course, uh, as the name suggests, uh, which focuses on your essay writing. Uh, the aim is to get you up to speed with the standard expected at university. So there's a gap between A-level and university. And we want to address that. So we will support you through one-to-one -one tuition, uh, through small group teaching, uh, with your writing, to improve it, to make sure that you understand the expectations of study at university. Uh, a lot of universities will just throw you in the deep end and expect you to know what to do. We will uh, walk you through that process. So by the end of your first year, you have a very clear sense of what is expected uh, at a heavyweight university, and you're in a position to deliver that. Um, we're very proud of those changes. We think they work really, really well. And our undergraduate <coughs> students uh, think so too. You get a chance to talk to any of the student ambassadors, I would encourage you to ask them about this. It's been very, very effective. In addition, every piece of work you submit at UCL, you'll get a one-to-one -one feedback meeting for. Uh, we also offer, uh, every academic has an office hour. You can go along and talk about whatever's bothering you. Uh, literally whatever's bothering you. Arsenal's transfer strategy, for instance. You know, if that's on your mind, you can go and talk to your tutor about it. it might not be the best use of your time, but whatever. Um, you can go and talk about work. You can go and talk about uh, additional reading or a problem, an intellectual problem you may have had with the work to date. You can talk about an upcoming essay. Um, academics are, are approachable. Um, and there's plenty of opportunity for one-to-one -one contact. We're also a unique department in that we offer such a range of courses. So we teach really from about uh, 2000 BC to 2017. Uh, and there are no barriers to combining those courses. Um, so you can flit across not just modern, early modern and medieval, but also the ancient world too. You can bring all those chronological periods into one history degree as far as I know, and I'm very happy to be corrected, is unique. Um, was that someone whistling because they were going to correct me? Grant, okay. Um, so, that's really unusual, really unusual. We have ancient historians in the department, um, and lots of our students do choose to pick and choose from different chrono chronological periods. I think it's very healthy, I think it's very exciting. In addition to the standard BA history offer, offer two further degrees. We offer history with a European language, um, which is what it sounds like, a four-year program, and history with a year abroad, where your third year is spent at another institution overseas. Usually, though not exclusively in North America, usually though not exclusively in the United States. And on that year abroad, you are treated just the same as any other student at that institution. So if you go to University of California, you'll be treated as any other third year at the University of California. You'll follow the same curriculum uh, for that year. And we'll support you in the process of applying and getting there, of course. So what do our folks do? I mentioned that employers uh, are very favorable towards our graduates. What, in practice, do they end up doing? This is not an exhaustive list, of course. Uh, this is a back-of-the-envelope list. Uh, people that I've taught over the last couple of years. What did they go on to do? Um, so some things you probably expect to see up there. So law, very popular with our graduates, both criminal um, and commercial law. Um, some go into journalism. Um, in fact, quite a few in recent years have gone into journalism via one-year journalism courses elsewhere. Um, aided, I think, by work that they did during their undergraduate degree. So while studying here, they went and did internships at newspapers, at magazines, uh, and then translated that on graduation into um, permanent posts. Uh, a couple going to city jobs. 
uh, finance, management consultancy, um, and so on. Lots go into politics, uh, and in particular, think tanks uh, and the civil service. Uh, so I've got two recent graduates working uh, here in this beautiful building, Foreign and Commonwealth Office. Um, lots go into the third sector, NGOs and charities. Again, a field that is fiercely competitive, um, a field where you often need prior experience of work in order to get a professional job. Um, lots of our students, because of where we are, um, have that opportunity. So, you know, a recent student uh, would as an intern for Amnesty International for a while, um, and then picked up charitable work after she graduated, uh, based on her experience uh, in the sector. And of course, many go into teaching, many go on uh, to further study, both in history and in other uh, disciplines. Okay, what do you need to know then? Uh, behind me, the, the entry requirements that we look for. Um, this is actually inaccurate insofar as you do not need that additional pass at a fourth AS level. We no longer look for that. Um, it's now just three A levels uh, in that category. The most up to date information uh, is in the online prospectus, which I'm sure you've all seen. If you go to the website, you can find out uh, the most recent details. I would strongly urge you to, to do your research. Um, you're going to be spending three or perhaps four years uh, at an institution, um, it needs to be the right one for you. Um, so do your research. Think about what's available to you. Think about what kind of institution you would like to end up at. Some people will decide that London isn't for them and go elsewhere. Some people will decide that history isn't for them and go elsewhere. That's grand. As long as you're making an informed decision, um, that's the main thing. Because it is a big commitment. Think about what different universities can offer you, what different departments can offer you. And as you've done today, visit. You know, try and get a, a sense of the culture of the place. Uh, how would it feel to be uh, an undergraduate here on a, on a daily basis? Uh, and I'm sure many of you already have. You're very welcome to visit us uh, in person in the common room. So we're going to finish here at about 3.30, 3.35. I'm going to wander back over. So if any of you have any questions uh, that we don't answer in the next 10 minutes or so, do come seek us out. Uh, there'll be me, there'll be other members of staff. Uh, there will also be uh, student ambassadors there who I'm sure will be very happy to answer any queries that you might have. All right, any questions? Go ahead. <laughs>